Did you have a Kevin Hart ride along experience? Because I listed your resume when we first started and a cop was not on it. You're not really a cop in real life. Right. I mean, you played one very well, great, that. but you're not in real life. So did you, do you have cop friends? Did you get with some cops like, hey, can I shadow you? Can I follow you? Can yeah. I ride with you? How did you end up doing that so that you can make sure that Kevin, your character that you play on the show really comes off as authentic? Well, uh, the show provided us with uh, tactical advisors okay. that help us out all the time. So somebody is always on set, and their, their job is to make sure that everything looks authentic, everything is genuine, and that everything makes sense, you know, from a, from a cop perspective especially, because the last thing you want to do is be on a cop show, and then you see a cop on the street, and they like, that's not how we do it. That's, that's we not, you know. So, um, so I'm very grateful. For, for the cops. I, I'm, I'm just gonna name one just because he's probably one of my best homies. His name is Looch, Brian Looch. And he's an active Chicago PD officer actually, but he works very, very heavily with the writers and the producers to make sure that um, that all of our characters are genuine. Um, and so, you know, we don't necessarily go on ride-alongs, but we have been trained. Okay. Um, and um, my favorite thing about cops is really just the camaraderie. You can kind of like sink into being a cop if you just hang with them. You know, okay. and so we have a lot of extras on set that are actually cops, and so I really just people watch. And when I observe the cops that are on set, just joking, having a good time, um, uh, busting each other's balls like they like to call it, um, you know, it, it just really just gets you in that mood. And so I think that that's helped the cast also because we get to see that, and so being around that helps us look like a powerful cop. If you could go play basketball mm -hmm. or take any of the characters that you've ever played out to dinner mm -hmm. and just hang with them, who's the coolest character or most interesting or whatever, however, that you would want to take out and just hang with, yeah. that you've played? That's a powerful question. I like you that. Like that. Yeah, thank, thank you like that? Thank you. And I, I got an answer for you. I okay. did this play. Um, I did this play going on a couple of years ago now called Who Do Love? Okay. And uh, it was written by uh, a great playwright named Katori Hall. She, um, and she created this character called Ace of Spades. And it's a period piece, so it, take, it takes place in, I want to say, the 40s. Okay. And um, he's from Memphis. He's a blues singer. Um, you know, he plays harmonica and the guitar and stuff like that. But his dream, his aspiration is to uh, have a hit record in Chicago. And so he's always in and out. And he was something like a bachelor, too, you know. And so he would be in and out. Of different, uh, you know, different honeys, you know, cribs or whatnot. And, but every time that train came, that through, awkward pause. That was such an awkward pause, though. Yeah. That he'd be in and out of different honeys' cribs. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I, I play with yeah, the words just, for you. Yeah. Bottom line is, yeah, right. he, he, he was a real cool cat, and he's one of my favorite characters to this day. I really enjoy just um, how 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 powerful he helped me feel as an actor. Mm -hmm. Like he really brought out a lot of things in me that that I think I already had, like, you know, he was very musically inclined, he wrote music, he had big dreams and aspirations, he was a bachelor himself, but it was it was, it was was something about him that really taught me a lot about myself as an artist. And I think he just taught me how to just, uh, how to just uh, keep going. Okay, you know, I like was, that. But, but he also taught me um, something about the ladies too, and he, he basically, you, you treat women right. That's great. I, you, we we you love right that thing. motto, don't we, ladies? You do the right we thing. We like that. To, to honeys. Yes, um, do the right thing to the honeys. Because they'll do the wrong thing to you. If you don't. If you don't. If you don't. How powerful is your voice? Man, I think it's um. I think it has great power, especially now. You know, I used to uh, when I when I used to pray, and I still pray. But my prayer used to be for um, leverage. My prayer used to be for a powerful voice. I never really prayed to be on TV. I never really prayed to um, like be famous or become a celebrity. I just prayed to have a voice that was powerful enough to influence um, others and help change you know, things, motivate people. So um, more and more, I, I see my prayers being answered. I think I think my voice is pretty powerful. So I want to know from an actor, mm -hmm. when did or you just were you just comfortable from jump? Oh, rip! I can just kiss somebody, or did it take you time to get used to doing that, to making doing make out scenes? I think I just kind of prepared myself for it because it took a while. To be honest, um, I didn't really start kissing people until like a couple years ago. I think in my 
in my acting career. Okay. Um, and 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 when I did, it was like it was for real. Like in that in that play, Who to Love? I think what the reason I loved it so much was because the 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 play actually opened with me having sex, not even just kissing a person. It was I was having sex with that woman. Oh, literally, really having sex. Well, it was, it was play sex, but it was but we had but you know what I'm saying. Right. That's how it opened okay. up. Okay. But for years. You know, like all my all my colleagues were like kissing for. I'm like, man, when I'm gonna get my kiss, man? Like, I want to kiss somebody on stage, man. I would love to just kiss a girl on stage. I want people to, you know, I want I want to do that. I want to I want to show that love, and I didn't for a long time. And then when I finally did, I think I was just ready for it. But it's actually, you know, I mean, if you're a professional and if you're acting, it's one of those things where you just, you know, you just gotta be vulnerable. And throw the wall up at the same time, you know, because okay. naturally you want to sail the scene, right? You know, right? And and kissing is probably one of the most intimate, vulnerable things that you can share, right? With with, with another person, you know what I'm saying? And I so agree. You really wanna you wanna give into that. You, mm-hmm. you want that to be uh, noticeable. But at the same time, there's a certain amount of professionalism you have to you have to have, and mm-hmm. it, for respect for yourself and the other artists, there's there's, there's a thin wall. That you got to throw up, but the, but that that line is pretty thin though. Okay. But, but it's fun though. I like it. Mm, it sounds like you do. Okay, so <laughs> now this part of the interview is for the ladies because we said we've talked about your acting and we talked about some some music that he does. But now the bachelor part comes into play. So I have some questions. Yeah, I'm a bachelor, the, by the way, ladies. And he's kids. a bachelor. So I have some questions that the ladies would like to know. You ready? Yeah. All right, let's do this. What do you look for in a woman? <laughs> 